on how to do something that takes a lifetime. We're going to talk about culture, how to build culture from a distance today. First off, uh, who am I? Hi, uh, Brett Martin here. I'm president of Kumo Space. Uh, we build virtual offices for remote and distributed teams where they show up to work every day. Uh, I also run a venture capital, New York-based venture capital fund called Charge Ventures. And uh, I'm also an adjunct professor of data analytics and machine learning at Columbia Business School. Um, so if you remember one thing from this presentation, it's to send me all of your hot deals. I'm, not really, but you can definitely do that. All right, so first off, let's talk about company culture. We've got a large audience here. Surely most of you uh, know what company culture is. Anyone? You, sir? Feeling, feeling the atmosphere and the people. I understand it's a squishy question, which, and so what I did what, when I uh, want to offload all my thinking, I asked the oracle. I told you we would be talking about AI today. It's probably a little small, so I'll read it. it. Talks about shared values, beliefs, attitudes, company history, the way we interact, leadership style. <sighs> Actually reminds me of a film I saw recently, good film, anyone, anyone know it? Everything, everywhere, all at once? Well, when something is everything, it becomes nothing, right? It becomes, it becomes meaningless. And um, as, my, as my father used to tell me, uh, if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there, right? So one thing I know for sure is that you have a company culture. The only question is whether you let it happen to you or you choose to define it. All right, so this is the meaningless company culture. Don't let it happen to you, right? Let's define what it is. And so one thing I know for sure is that culture is not what you, just what you say. Uh, let's talk about this. Wells Fargo, anyone? Integrity, respect, and responsibility. Uh, well, yes, uh, their integrity, respect, and responsibility of Wells Fargo, their professed company values, led to one of the largest frauds in the history of America, ba American banking. We're really good at that, by the way. Uh, they basically promoted, uh, created millions of fraudulent accounts on behalf of their customers. Uh, why did they do that? Well, cross-selling and more products for per customer meant more fees, right? So... Uh, they were incentivized to create more accounts. So we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Another good example of company culture, Uber. What happened to Uber? Massive, massive scandals. No, you know, Uber was successful and known for, uh, you know, their, t their hard-charging attitude, basically ignoring regulators, sabotaging competitors. Well, it's not surprising that with that sort of culture, they eventually went down uh, under charges of intimidation and multiple charges of intimidation and harassment came out and the leadership uh, was forced out, forced out of the company. Uh, as, as my girlfriend says, uh, uh, you win them how you lose them. So what is culture, right? Uh, culture is what you do, right? Culture is the habits that we actually the things that we do, and specifically, it's not just what you do, it's what you do, what you communicate, and what you reward to your team. Don't worry, we're gonna get to your re remote culture bullet. We just have to get clear about what culture is. It's pretty, it's pretty squishy, right? So, uh, actions, speak louder, actions speak louder than words, right? Do you show up on time? Do you, do you prepare for meetings? Do you treat your team kindly, right? Your team is like uh, little ducklings, you know, following you across the street. They're watching everything you do and they're mimicking it. So it starts with what you do. It's not just what you do, though. It's what you share. Now, I think this aspect of company culture, writing down your corporate values, is probably the most overrated, so I won't spend a, a, ton, of, a ton of time here. I would actually take a team that... Uh, I would take a management team that does the right thing over says the right thing uh, every day. But maybe one point I would make is that you almost specifically have, you almost can get more value out of by saying what you don't value than what you do. I actually think a really 
useful exercise for defining your culture is to define what you will do not value or prioritize as a company. It's all about prioritization. So let's take an example. An example would be, do you prior, prioritize speed or perfection? Well, if uh, Ryan Ayer's motto was, move fast and break things, I don't think I would be flying it very often, right? So you have to align, you know, you have to be clear on what you don't prioritize. If I were building an airline, not, I would be pretty careful about prioritizing perfection as opposed to speed. But, but finally, uh, culture is what you reward, right? Uh, and it, as we so eloquently say in the States, uh, money, talk, money talks, bullshit walks, right? And so at the end of the day, we are talking about uh, a job and people, people want to get paid, right? But compensation isn't just obviously money, it's what you choose to reward, what you highlight, right? And so if we look back at Uber and we look at Wells Fargo, we see two companies that basically said one thing and then rewarded another, either fraudulent behavior or reckless, reckless behavior, right? So do, share, reward. And I think that to de my definition of company culture is culture becomes the co-founder, the person in the room that is there when you're not, right? You, culture is what your team, it's the norms, it's what they'll do when you're not there to advise them. So this is pretty important in particular when we're not spending time here anymore and the office looks like this, right? This is why, presumably why we're here Presumably everyone here has some sort of distributed component. Any organization that gets sufficiently large instantly becomes a distributed team. Any team that take it, takes advantages of the flat world has to leverage distributed teams, right? And so we are trying to figure out how do we bring culture to organization, how do we bring culture in our organization when we're not there for our team to see us and how we do and how we communicate and how we act, all right? Is this is this a fair premise? Okay. So, what is the first, the first thing I will share is that there's no silver bullet. I'm sorry. If you were looking for the secret code, the cheat code uh, for company culture, I don't have it. Personally, I don't think it exists. If you find it, definitely let me know. But it's not a few big things. You know, uh, I think uh, a once a month Zoom happy hour does not a culture make. Give it up, give it up. This is gonna, you gotta devote all your time to this, right? It comes from a bunch of small things. At the end of the day, this is what will drive your company culture. And so, just as the co-founder of Kumo Space, uh, we've been very fortunate because, you know, again, we make these virtual offices, we have um, thousands of teams using them, millions of users all across the world, spending millions of hours a month in virtual offices. So we've been very lucky to see how some of the best remote teams in the world run their organizations, learn from their best practices. And in the next six minutes and 40 seconds, I'm just gonna share a couple ideas with you about what we've seen that works. All right, first off, GitLab. This is a uh, Ukrainian dev security ops company how many people have heard of GitLab here? Wow, how many other dev security ops companies do you know? Yeah, not that many. Oh, we got, we got this gentleman here, he's got one. <laughs> You're my plant. So why do we all know about GitLab? Because they have built an incredibly effective remote culture. They have over a thousand employees in 65, 65 companies as of when I checked Wikipedia this morning. And uh, they're very loud and proud about their culture, and they use it as a weapon. How do they do it? Well, one example, remote onboarding. We all acknowledge that remote onboarding is a challenge. It's uh, you know, one of these most commonly uh, listed problems in uh, you know, running a remote team. GitHub, GitLab acknowledges this up front and combats it. They, it. they start people off on the right foot. They don't let a new employee flounder. They connect every new employee with a one-on-one -on -one onboarding mentor to show them, show them the ropes, right? They don't, they let, make sure things get off to the right start. We have a bunch of examples in this in Kumo space. Uh, Primerica, it's a large 
uh, brokerage in the U.S., you know, they have to do lots of trainings. I don't know about y'all, but when I have to do my SOC 2 compliance, uh, you know, I might just sit there and cook dinner and then occasionally hit forward when it asks me, uh, you know, to watch a video, right? Primerica has their training videos, has teams watch them inside of a virtual space together inside the office. So you're there with a bunch of new recruits watching a video, yes, asking questions together, learning together, right? Another... Uh, customer of Kumo Space, Tilt, they have, they have a lobby with a launch pad where every new recruit comes and they sit in there and they learn how to use the office. It's just like being led around an office on your first day of work. And they have a culture of anyone who has a few free minutes, if they see someone in that new employee area, they'll just drop by and say hello. So it starts on day one. Documentation. Again, GitLab, notoriously async uh, company, mostly de mostly developers. They to handle all the questions. They have extensive documentation. Okay, that's great if you're developers and you're fully and you're always thoughtful. But how many of you have don't even know where your handbook is if you had to find it, your new employee handbook, right? So one of the things we've realized is the good documentation isn't enough. You need to know where to find it. And so in Kumo Space, we actually let you put your documents like your roadmap or your employee handbook or, or your, uh, you know, the place where you make recommendations for referrals for employees in the space. We basically have the documents on our desk so we see them every day. It's a constant reminder of the, you know, the tools we need, they're on our desk. Offsites. Now, you know, lots of remote companies uh, have offsites. I think you know, one thing to acknowledge is that remote is not perfect. I, you know, I literally shill virtual office software for a living. Here I am standing at a conference, right? I'm not going to lie to you that in-person is not important. So it needs to be strate used strategically. One thing I, I think a lot about the office of today, it's a lot like the inverted classroom. I don't know if we have any other educators here, but historically, you would lecture in the classroom and do homework at night. Well, a lot of the way education has moved is that you actually watch the videos of the lecture at night and then you workshop during the day. I think a lot about the new office, like ways to run hybrid teams, is similar to this model. So you don't do work in the office. We all are knowledge workers. We're all sitting on computers all day. We're all on calls all day. We don't need to sit in the office to do that. Why do we go to the office? We go to the office to connect. We go to the office to socialize. We go to the office to collaborate. We go to the office to do things you can only do in the office. And so you need to use that time sparingly. At Kumo Space, we have offsites for the team twice a year, and we focus almost exclusively on building social, social connections and high-level vision. We don't even workshop. We actually have leadership and team-by-team -team on sites where we just shove everyone into the cheapest basement we can find for a day to figure out what the company's strategy is, right? So, you know, we can't afford... One sort of dirty secret that the remote community doesn't tell you about off-sites is that they're really expensive. It's true. So you have to use them sparingly. And if you do have office space, you know, I highly recommend getting one of these distributed passes to uh, WeWork or something like that for your team so you can have more in-time person. Quick, just quickly go through these. Envision, they're another great distributed OG team based out of New York. They have virtual bonding. You know, a lot of companies use Kumo Space for virtual events, but our most successful virtual office companies they weave the event into the everyday experience. So here we got one of our customers, Minerva. They have a little stretch session at the beginning of their every leadership meeting, right? They build the event into the experience. Show and tell. I think one of the biggest, scariest things about the future of remote work, if you think it's just going to be Slack and Zoom, is that we're all going to become little, all going to fit in little boxes and we're going to become green dots. I think one of the biggest parts of running a successful remote company is that you need to give people a place to express their personality, right? So at the beginning of every leadership meeting, we basically say, hey, what's one little thing you did over the weekend, personal and professional win for last week? We have teams in Kumo Space that take this to the next level. They basically reward uh, one of our company's global response. They basically reward employees with virtual items who hit their KPIs, who watch all their training videos. So you, you can provide these little loose sites in a virtual experience too. And finally, we talked about mentorship. 
we have teams that basically have shadow programs where people walk around with the virtual office with each other. So I have a few more seconds. Buffer, another famous virtual distributed company for its, uh, what do you, for its transparency, they basically create opportunities. So I just want to make sure you know it does, it's not about the tool, right? Kuma Space makes virtual offices. Lots of people use Slack, have a winning channel, have a place for people to express themselves. In Kuma Space, I have a virtual office at the beach, though. So I personally think that's a little cooler. And finally, how do you create opportunities for your team to share its appreciation for each other? Uh, Buffer gives a little uh, bonuses for people to share. We basically give an opportunity to give shout outs at, the, at our hand, all hands for everyone uh, every week. And not only that, you know, another one of our customers, phone sales team, they actually have a gong. They're, they do a better job than they do. They actually leverage the virtual space to create something unique. They built a gong in their office and they ring every time they hit a win. So you don't need to be there in person for that. I'll just conclude with this. You know, the big secret, here it is. I know you've all been waiting for the big secret of building a remote culture. Anyone have any idea what it is? There is no secret. I'm sorry. Sorry to let you down. It's all the little things. All right, this is Brett Martin from Kumo Space. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Brett, we, we, we actually have a couple of minutes. I was going to see, does anybody in the audience have a question for Brett? Don't leave me hanging. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Have you discovered that uh, some functions or departments are less remotable than others? Uh, yeah, so it's team by team. I think that if you were to generalize, not that I would do such a thing, I, fi I find that developers, the more structured thinkers, tend to be able to handle async better, they're more introverted, whereas I find sales teams in particular really miss the energy that comes from you know, being around their team. Uh, a lot of our largest customers are contact centers, distributed sales organizations, mar marketing teams that know that sales is a really lonely job uh, on your own and you need to have that competitive feeling of learning from each other. Does Kumo Space um, integrate with like Slack or does it try to replace Slack? Yeah, so uh, we have teams that use only Kumo Space. We have our own chat function. We have teams that use Kumo Space and Slack. We have teams that use Kumo Space and, uh, and Teams. It, it depends on your configuration. I think eventually there's going to be consolidation in this space and everyone's going to basically try to use one tool. I mean, that's what Teams is basically doing, right? Like if you're interacting with other agencies who are using Slack already and you want to migrate to Kumo Space, then like Slack yeah. is essential because you've already got connections through Slack. We, we have a bunch of teams that they come on Kumo Space and then they quit Slack. I mean, one of, the, one of the best reasons of using Kumo Space is visibility. So what I say is that people come for the culture, they, they buy for the visibility, and then they stay for the collaboration. What I mean by that is everyone who's running a remote or distributed or even hybrid team knows that they have a culture problem. But what they realize is they miss the visibility. They miss knowing what their team's doing. They miss the ability to actually get in front of people. And if you see someone doing something wrong, you know, everyone talks about managed by outputs, managed by outputs. Okay, but if you know the input is wrong, you don't have to wait a month later for the report to know that it's not gonna work, right? So if you, or you're sitting side by side with someone and you see them doing it incorrectly, you actually can intervene earlier and, and help them, right? And this is a big part of why remote employees get left behind is because they don't get that same level of mentorship. And then finally, it's, you know, a big problem on Slack is, yeah, your dot's green, but are you actually available? Text, text, hey, are you up? <laughs> right, so knowing that everyone is in your office and creating that compact to be together and work together is a big part of the value of Kumo Space. So before they kick me off stage, can you all do me a favor? I wanna just take a selfie for my mom. So can we just do like a little crazy face on three? One, two, three. Thank you so much. All right, have fun, y'all. Take care.